I'm not here to make sure you feel comfortable. That's not why I'm here. That's not my purpose. And that's not anybody's purpose. In my opinion, you're not here to make me feel comfortable or anyone else. You're here to live your truth and bring your light to the table because your light and your truth is going to help me. If it makes me uncomfortable as you do it, that's my issue. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte, identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. Welcome to the Way of the Artist podcast with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan C. Schulte. And this is our third episode, technically fourth, but really our third. And uh, we're calling this one Claiming the Path. Well, that was like like a very, uh, you're such a nice man. You're such, <laughs> such a, a nice, nice, such a nice guy. Such a nice guy, Brandon. That was such a nice guy introduction. Was, uh, <laughs> Get <so> like, ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we got to uh, start, you got to start from somewhere, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, beginning, we talked about that on the last one. Just, you just begin. We just start. We're just going to do this thing. Well, I'm going to say something right at the top. Do it. So Evan and I have been talking. And we've been talking As a lot. We do. Yeah, we, we talk a lot. Yeah, we do. We're blowhards. Uh, but we think we have some decent things to say every now and then. <laughs> Usually they're recorded, we hope. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Um, there, is a, there is a great pressure I think we all feel between who we are, where we're at, and where we want to be. And as we start this podcast, this particular episode, I'm finding that come up. The reason why is because we've gone through the first two stages of this. We talked about finding your path. We talked about embracing your path. And this third stage, the claiming your path, I don't know if Evan and I have answers for it. And I don't know if we necessarily can um, say definitively what it is to claim your path. Yeah. And in this episode, I think what we're, we're going to attempt to do is get as close to that as possible so that we can set up the rest of this podcast. Yes. Because claiming your path is kind of an unapologetic type of action. And also it requires kind of two things at the same time, in my opinion. One is being authentically true to who you are right now. And at the same time, being bold enough to have that vision and that dream that you can go for and be and live and do the the vision that you have. And claiming has this kind of massive gap in some ways between the two. At least you feel that at times. Yeah. And that's the thing that we're kind of talking about. We're talking about you claiming both sides of that spectrum and owning it fully, I think. Yeah. And there's... It's... It's a massive thing. Yes. You know, I, I, I really love how you put that because it really is like, um, as far as we've discussed this, we, we usually do a little bit of a little kind of like powwow before we start this, you know, just be like, okay, kind of like, what are we getting into? And, and maybe what are a few things? We don't plan it out too much because like to have some discoveries in here. But this was one, like the last couple, and, and they were terrific. I really loved the last one we did of embracing the path. We talked a lot about certain kind of laws that kind of come into play. And as we started talking about this one, it was like, whoa, what is this one? This is a completely different beast altogether because there's not really a lot of definitive things that we can pin down with claim your path because it's your path. You know, like it's, we can't really tell you how to claim it. And it entails, um, like you said, there's, there's a being in claiming your path. There is a, it's a way in which you are. It's an attitude. It's an understanding. It's a knowing. That was a word that we, that came Mm -hmm. up that was like more sort of like, yeah, that one feels kind of right. <laughs> so it was like knowing it's, there's kind of, there's, it's a being and it's a knowing and it, a trust yes. that goes with that. And then with that, there was this vision element of like, okay, what is it that I want to create? Yeah. What is it that I want to put out into the world? And we use light as well. It's like, what is the light that I want to put out into the world? But also what is my light? Mm-hmm. And these they're they're attached there's a, a massive relationship between these two things 
Um, but we're going to we're going to try and kind of like fumble our way through this one a little bit and and see what we come away with. But I think we've got some good stuff I think coming we, down the pipe. <laughs> I think we do. And I think with this particular podcast, what this episode particularly is the whole show, you know, way of the artist, the, the sub line, the subtext line is claim your path, claim your creative path. Right. And so <clears throat> that's what this whole show is aiming to answer. That's what this whole show is aiming to discuss and investigate and look at. Mm-hmm. So in some ways, and I don't think there will ever be an answer, right? Like just boom, you're an- like, that's the answer. Well, I mean, the, there's one that I would be like, yeah, that would be close to what I would say is the answer, but it's one that's just like, it, it, it requires so much explanation. It requires so much, um, we're going to get into this, but like, it's, it's, it, it, it's such a loaded statement Yes, that it's like, it wouldn't explain it. Even if I were to say it right off the top here. Right. But I'm going to save it for later. <laughs> okay. You're going to save it. I'm going to give people a little, a little filter so they can run this episode through and, and just an, an analogy. I think that might be good because you talked about the light, like, and so I think that claiming the path, this is my interpretation at the beginning of this podcast and maybe subject to change, but, uh, is that how bright are you willing to shine your own true authentic light and how bright are you willing to shine and own and accept and and believe in the vision that you want to walk towards and make and create in your life. And so I think the claiming has something to do with this. How bold, how courageous, how willing, how, how much are you willing to shine your light? And at the same time, honor where you are at right now, but not make where you are at your limit just make it your starting point, Mm -hmm. you know, because this is a journey of many, many steps. But in the beginning, this is the thing I think many people might be considering that you believe because our world has taught us this, that we're after some destination. This is my idea. I think we're going to see many, many beautiful destinations along the way, but no single destination really matters as much as you think. Mm -hmm. What matters is that you as the experiencer on the journey is what matters. And what you need to do in some ways is go to these destinations to realize that it wasn't the destination that was beautiful, but it was you that was beautiful experiencing Mm -hmm. the journey to the destination. And that's going to take some work because that's a, almost a psychological kind of reconstruct of our minds. Yeah. Yeah, It's like, uh, yeah, to unpack everything you just said, it's like because I'm uh, I'm totally on board. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 a bit of like a huh, like a, 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 not a common thing that we we wrap our heads around. There's it's a bit philosophical, but there's a beautiful um, logical truth to the whole thing as well. Um, that yeah. The, so let's let's get into the light thing first. Okay, let's do it. I want to. I, I want to get into that a little bit. So light, you know, it's, people throw that around a lot. You know, it's like it's like let your light shine. You know, I mean, it's like I love how people talk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let your light shine. I don't know if this person is someone's aunt. Yeah, like totally. At, at your like high school play or something. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but and, and it's great. It's 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 fantastic advice. Um, but like so many of these things, like we hear these and, but we don't ever really hear them, you know, like, well, what does that, what does that even mean? That's a question we like to ask around here. I like, well, what does that even mean mm-hmm. to, to your light? And, you know, first thing I say, like, well, what are, are some of the associations that you listening at home might be thinking about saying like, well, light, what is that? What kind of images or other words does that bring up for you hmm. of like, what is your light and bringing your light out, recognizing your light. And it, it does encompass a lot of things that we've already kind of mentioned. It's like your light is your vision. Your light is your dreams. You know, your light is your creativity, your unbounded creativity. Your light is your love. Your light is your passion. Your light is your joy. 
these are just a few things that are coming to my mind as we're talking about this. And this is about taking all of that stuff and being like, oh, wow, look at all of this stuff that I've got here. <laughs> and just being like, well, let's just bring this out. Yeah. Let's just bring this and push this out into the world. Right. And, and into the world around me on this, on this path, on this journey that I'm on. Right. And how fully are we able to let that come out? Because to me, the way, the way I sort of look at the world is that, you know, we're not missing anything. You know, I don't think that we need to be fixed. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with us as people, as individuals. Um, so to me, that's just like, well, let's just get the stuff out of the way that's blocking our light from coming through. Cause it's all there. Mm-hmm. I think that it's all there. It's all there inside you. Um, so it's about how fully are we, are we letting that come out mm-hmm. to me? And you know, I, a big word that comes to my mind that I don't know if you said or not, I, I don't think you did, but it was expression. I think about light and I think about Mm. what's my expression. That is my light. You know, my light comes out through my expression. And I think, you know, this is going to be probably a big topic for me that will uh, land uh, throughout the podcast, throughout many episodes in the future is the concepts of expression, repression and depression, because I have had moments of great expression. I've had moments where I've been repressed in my expression and I've actually experienced the moments of depression. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if I've ever met an artist who hasn't, to be honest. I don't know if I've ever met a human being who hasn't experienced it to some degree. And I found that, um, repression and depression are actually these really great things because, um, they, they, we just look at them as these negatives, but in some ways, when you repress your emotion, when you repress your expression, so to speak, you be kind of become down the road of depression after a while. Yeah. And depression is really just your expression turned inward and not being allowed to be put out. And repression is you don't feel safe to put your expression out in the world, right? So you don't feel safe long enough. You stop putting it outward. You yeah. stop expressing. You become depressed, right? And then we try to mend and fix our depression with, you know, I don't know, movies, pills, drinks, smokes, whatever. Right. Yeah. So my thing is, is like with this whole, uh, you know, bringing your light out is like, how willing are you to express? How willing are you to express not just, um, what you've heard or seen, but what is you like, what is the thing that you want to bring to the world Mm -hmm. and your ideas, your, your feelings, your, yeah. Right. And I think like the finding the path, uh, and, and, uh, you know, um, embracing the path episodes were a little bit, a little bit about us finding out what our expression even was, because I think before you can really claim your expression, you kind of need to start to figure out like, what is even me in this world? Like, am I just mimicking what my parents did or what my friends did or what my society does? Or am I actually expressing what is actually me? Right. Yeah. And, and that's a weird little thing we kind of got to go through. Yeah. And I think, um, cause I'm just kind of like, oh yeah, I seen like how this happened because you know, when we, <laughs> when we planned that you started putting together these first three episodes and talking about them, I, I just love this. Oh my God. I just love this. This is so, <laughs> this is so good. He's having a moment people. You know, He's having a moment. No, because it's like, it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, when, when you're connected and you're, and you're passionate and excited about these things. Uh, and, and we talked about this on a little bit on the last episode on embracing the path. We're talking about simplicity and, um, and that keeping things simple and, and finding ways to do that has a way of like bringing out all of these amazing complexities we didn't even plan on. Mm. Um, and this is kind of like one of those moments where I was just like, oh my God, we kind of set these things up in this, this third one. We're like, what are we really say, talking about with this one? And seeing how really this claiming your own path uh, in this trio of episodes is, is really the logical next step and how it actually kind of brings the first two together in a wonderful way. Because that first episode, we ask some questions. These were some things about diving deep into ourselves, asking ourselves some big questions, 
which was really a thing of like, okay, well, where is my light? What is my light? Mm. What is that thing? And being like, oh, wow, here is this light that I have. And then I'm starting to get a, or, or at least then I'm getting a sense of that is wanting to come out. And then in episode two, we are talking about embracing the path, which was so much about bringing, now taking the step out. So it was... Yeah, you find it within. We find it within. And then you actually take a now, physical step out and in the now world. We're you, taking you start it to express out. it, right? Yes. And so I think for me, as I'm starting to understand where this is going a little bit here, is that claiming your own path is really about... a uh, a realization of those first two elements. Hmm. It's about those things coming together. We've even already sort of talked about that, you yeah. know? <laughs> but it, it is, it is a realization, um, in, in our being and in our lives and in our experience of taking these things, bring them together and being like, this is the way that I am. Mm. This is the way that I do my life. Yes. This is this. And this is the only way that it's I the, do my life. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's, I think what we talked about this before and it's the unapologetic self. Yes. It's when you no longer judge who you are and how you do the world and the way you show up. Mm-hmm. And I think that, uh, and that's not to say that we are not human and don't make mistakes and stuff like that, but unapologetic in the sense of, of we are in tune with our, our best creative selves Hmm. You know, not destructive selves, Mm -hmm. creative selves. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this is, well, you know, you bring up a really good point here because you talked about the destructive self and the creative self. And I think that inside of us, you, to have creativity, you also have to have a sense of destruction. You have to understand that you can either create and build and, and, and manifest and do all this stuff in the world. At the same time, you can destroy, dismantle and sabotage. Mm -hmm. And you can do both. And sometimes we act in our, you know, if you want to call it your lower self, your destructive, sabotaging self, right? And I think sometimes we do this to make other people comfortable, right? So Mm -hmm. like, um, you know, we say, well, you know, I want to make, I want to make, you know, 60 grand by the end of the year. It's like, well, I want to make a hundred grand by the end. Well, why would you really, is that like, is that really what's going to be happy? It's like, do you, I really want to make a million dollars, really want to make $10 million and we really want to make whatever, but I'm going to pare it down because it's not realistic because that's going to make everybody else uncomfortable if I say that. And they're kind of going to go, eh, I don't know if that's doable. Like, you know, yeah. so I'm not going to say what I really want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say what's appropriate. And that's our destructive self in action, right? That's mm-hmm. our yeah, self. That's definitely a side of our destruct. That's, right. that's a definitely self-destructive. It destroys our ourselves. vision. It, yeah. it isn't, it, it takes your vision and goes, let's minimize our vision. Come on. That's going to, that's not cool. That's going to make everyone comfortable, right? Like that's going to make people poke and prod. Yeah. So let's just, but, but we really believe deep down that we really want the million dollars, but let's just tell everyone we want less because you know yeah. what I mean? And I think we do this all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I remember, for example, I used to play soccer pretty seriously. And I remember I was at camp one summer and I said, you know, I want to go to the world cup. I want to play with, you know, the national team. You know, I want to, want to do this stuff. Do you know how hard that is to do? <laughs> I was like, yeah, of course it's hard. I remember my response. I was a kid. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, of course it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but you think this is like easy? <laughs> right. But at the time I was like, I remember just being like, yeah, what's your, what's your point? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But later in life, I remember sometimes minimizing my say, not, I didn't want to tell people that I didn't want to tell people is what I wanted, mm. you know, because I was like, well, Canada isn't going to make it to the world cup. <laughs> Well, okay, great. <laughs> Wonderful information there, friend. You know what I mean? But I think You're this really is really useful. Yeah, exactly. But I think this is the thing. We get enough of that kind of external feedback. We start to go, eh, I'm not going to tell people that because they just, they don't know how to, they don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. You know? And so I think, you know, you brought up a good point. We have a destructive self that sometimes self-sabotages us in the moment, but also self-sabotages our dreams and our vision. And I think if we bring it back to our main point, we said claiming your path is somewhere between being authentically where you are and being honest and truthful about what you really have a vision for and dream of. And so we need to not minimize these things. Yeah, and I also want to um, 
point out in this too, like just because I I don't know if anyone's doing this, but I could just sort of hear a little murmuring in my ear of just being like, well, when you say something like I'm going to unapologetically do like do what I want and go for my my stuff, and and sometimes it can carry with it a, like this idea of like, oh, what? So you can just like stomp over everyone and just like with and I'm like no this isn't about stomping over anyone this isn't about just bar- barricading your way through and you know knocking everyone over on your pursuit you know it's it, that's a different thing altogether you know like yeah. uh, we're talking you know i i feel like f- from the place that we are are coming from there's not this sense of just like screw everybody else. Yes. I'm just going to get mine. That's not what this is at all. I think, you know what, you know, and I agree. And I think it's an important thing you're clarifying when we're saying unapologetically claim your path, unapologetically go for your vision, your dream. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden it doesn't matter if you're kind or compassionate anymore. Like it doesn't mean that you get to like yeah. the physical rules of the world don't exist anymore. Yeah. It just simply means that you are not going to be bound by the mental psychological social limitations of other people. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're going to go and walk over them or hurt them or do anything immoral or whatever. Um, you know, basically the problem is, is when you dream big, it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. If you, you're rocking the boat, you're, you're shaking up the system. That's not really how it's supposed to be for some people. Right. So that makes them uncomfortable. You need to be unapologetic for how that makes you, how, how that makes someone else or even you uncomfortable. It's just like, I'm not here to make sure you feel comfortable. That's not why I'm here. That's not my purpose. And that's not anybody's purpose. In my opinion, you're not here to make me feel comfortable or anyone else. You're here to live your truth and bring your light to the table because your light and your truth is going to help me. If it makes me uncomfortable as you do it, that's my issue. But like, if you walk over me to do it, then you're not really, you're not being a good dude or you're not, you're, you know, you're not actually really being in your light. I would argue at that point. Yes. You know, you're not really being your light if you're, if you're just walking all over people to get to what you want. Right. You know, the, but like you're saying, there's being in your light is going to make people uncomfortable. Um, not everybody. There's some people who will absolutely love it. You know, that's people where you will just who will who will applaud you, who will be inspired by you. But there will be people who are be like, you know, the haters. Yes. You know, like I'm going to tear you down because of, of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Who are you to be doing this? You know, all this stuff. And, and, and sometimes that's us. That's ourselves saying that kind of shit to mm-hmm. ourselves. That's the self-destructive side of things. But um, yes, okay. unapologetically I- uninhibited. Um, this is who I am. This is my light. Here it is. Everybody take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. You know, I want to share the thing I said with you before we started the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Because it's kind of funny. Yeah. I think it expresses this point well. Is that you say this, basically you say this to to anybody. Technically, this is how you go through the world being unapologetic, in my opinion. Yeah. I get that my vision is so big that it makes you uncomfortable. But don't worry. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> And Evan yeah. pointed out, he's like, that's kind of a backhanded compliment, but it's kind of true. I mean, it's basically yeah. it. Like, like, I get that it makes you uncomfortable, but don't worry. Your discomfort doesn't bother me. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not here to protect you to keep your world small. If my big thinking or big dreams upset your apple or cart. big light. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, is there's a remedy to it. If you're uncomfortable by somebody shining, then join them. Don't fight it. Yeah. Cause the thing is, is like, what do you want to do? Do you want to dampen other people's light? Is that what you really want to do? Cause that's your dark destructive side. Right? So I think the thing is, is that, um, when we're claiming our path, when we're being unapologetic about it, it is literally saying that like, I get it. My dreams are big. My vision is big. I get that. I want to do something that isn't normal. That isn't what everyone else is doing. I get that that makes you uncomfortable. I get it. And I have compassion for that. But at the same time, I don't care. (laughs) It's the, but you got to kind of do that because the thing is, is like, I care, but I don't, I care because you're another human being and I feel really bad for you for thinking so small, 
But at the same time, I'm not going to think small just because you need that to feel mm-hmm. okay. And, you know, you, you, this might be your parent, you know, this might be your best friend. This might be your partner, your relationship. And here's the thing. I believe that light wins in the end of the day. I really honestly believe that if you just shine unapologetically, people kind of go, all right. Yeah. All right. All right. You're right. Yeah. Eventually <laughs> you know it, just, I mean? it just can't be ignored. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They're like, I'd like to do that too. You know what I mean? If, you just got to hold strong. You got to kind of stay with it. I'm going to share another little story. Just it's an actual personal story for me. Yeah. yeah. When I was creating this, the show soldiers of the apocalypse, right? I was creating it with, with everybody. The first thing, the way it started, I don't know how this came about, but I said to myself, I'm going to make this show. With, about soldiers and sci-fi and all this stuff. And I told people, I started telling people, I'm going to do it for like 10 grand. And everyone was like, that's impossible. You can't do that. And I remember people being like, yeah, okay, whatever. And just like all this negative. And I was just like, that's okay. I just remember being like, yeah, yeah, I can do it. I know I can do it. I know it's possible. I hadn't done it before, but I knew I could do it. Some weird divine kind of awareness in my mind. And so then I started to do it. I started to put together, we put together a trailer. I remember I put together a trailer and then people were like, whoa, this is so cool. And they're like, you should make a web series. You should make a da da da. And then I started doing that. And then people were like, Hey, could I be a part of it? And then I brought my best friend on, on. And then we were like, Hey, well, let's go do it. We started doing it. And then we had this, that we did it. We went out and it only cost us a couple grand actually brought all these actors and all these people in made this thing. We had 300 people show up to our live event as we showed our little 16 minute video and everybody was like blown away. And we made more money from the event than we did from even filming the thing or even more than that cost. And then after that, everybody wanted to be on the show. And then not too long after that, we had raised money for the show and we got more money and we had 42 actors in this show and we had a crew of 123 people. And it really just started with this idea that, Hey, I just want to play soldier. You know, I want to kind of make this like creative idea. And the thing is, is that my, the reason why I share this story is because at first you kind of have to step out to claim your path. I really believe you have to step out on your own and be alone and look a little crazy to everybody else. Maybe and even to yourself, maybe even to yourself, but just, you know, go out and, and if you believe it, if you see it possible, it can be possible, yeah. you know? And so the thing is, is like, um, we can, you know, we can make these things, we can manifest this stuff from our own imagination into reality. And I think that's what claiming the path really is. It's kind of like you going, this has never really happened in the real world yet. In the real world. Yeah. <laughs> but it's happening in my mind. And in my mind, I can see it happening in the real world. And I think I can find a way to make it so. And that's kind of claiming the path. It's kind of like, it's kind of taking the, the it, it's beyond reality. That's what I want to say. That's the thing I really want to get to. I think it's like, It's when you take your imagination and your imagination becomes more real than what you've seen in reality. Hmm. Because for me, when we were making that show, it was never, I never knew how we would do it. I didn't, I had ideas on how I would do it, but I didn't really know how, but I knew it would happen. And I don't necessarily know how I can say I knew how it would happen. I just knew. And so I just was so certain I just decided it would be, it may as well had been. And then we found the way. And that's what I think claiming the path is. You find the way it's like, you don't know it, but you know it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's, yeah, yeah, (laughs) totally. It's, it's stepping out. Like so much, this is building off of, um, like our last one, you know, we were talking about, you know, beginning trusting and the unknown, you know, and this is really just like, in many ways, an embodiment of, of all of these things of being like, okay, I'm doing this a hundred, like a hundred percent. I'm doing this. Like, there's no, like there, there's, there's no more than maybe like a momentary just being like, Oh, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah. All right. That's what I'm doing. All right. Yeah. And whew, we're going out and we're doing this, you know, we're, we're, we're creating, we become creators on our path and, we this is kind of like a rabbit hole we we started going down a little bit in our pre-talk but when we make the decision to step out onto this path um 
it, I mean, it is a step out into beginning to claim our path, but in our decision to do it, we have created the path. Yes. Because there wasn't necessarily a path there, but our decision to do it created it. Mm -hmm. And in that, following that line of logic and reasoning, we have created the whole path Mm. that is ahead of us. The whole thing, which is, that's going a bit down the rabbit hole with it. I understand. <laughs> but there is a kind of truth to that, mm. to, to that way of, of looking at it, that just through our decision, our choice to embark upon this thing of being like, hey, I've got this thing. I don't know what this thing is exactly, <laughs> but this is this thing. This is this thing. I, there's this thing and I've got it. And uh, I guess now I'm going forth with it. And now I'm kind of just feeling my way around with this and being like, oh, okay, we're going this way. We're going that way. Oh, up here. Okay. It's getting a little bit steep. Uh, You know, like uh, all of this thing's happening. Then after a while, we start to find our way. Hmm. Way of the artist. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. (laughs) But we start to find our way on this path. Yes. And we start to go, okay. I see what's, I see a little bit of what's going on here. I still don't know exactly how this is going to go, but I, but this is going somewhere and I'm in and I'm loving you know, it. Claiming the path is a little bit of saying like, all right, I don't know, but I'm in. Yes. You know, like it's just, it's, it's, um, it really is a, I don't even know what the word is for it right now, but just like it's, it's that diving in and just being like, it's, we said embracing on the last one, but this is beyond just embracing it. This is like just this full is, this on. Is, you know, I think you described it as falling. It's like falling in love in some ways. It's you're kind of out of control in a, in a sense too. You know, there's a certain kind of, if anybody's ever fallen in love, who's listening here, like the, the, the experience of falling in love is, is quite an interesting fascinating, crazy, wild experience. Because once you take that trip, all of a sudden you're like, what is happening? And it's like, it's wild because like, if you really are letting yourself fall into that love feeling, you find you'll make any effort to see that person. You'll do, you'll go through boundaries. You'll go through whatever. I mean, I remember my, my first girlfriend and we we were in love for sure. And I remember I would drive across the state to go see her. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I would, I, I, I did everything I could to make sure, you know, and she would do the same. And it was in quite incredible, like the lengths to what we would go to, to make that work, you know? And, um, I think that that state of falling in love is, is, is really part of the, the claiming the path. It's like this, you, you start doing it, you found it, you started to do it. You start to be like, Hey, I'm doing this. I really love this. You know, I remember when I was, when we started acting, I don't know if you had this experience, but I remember there was this period of falling in love with acting where it's like, all I want to do is act Mm. (laughs) or making films and writing scripts too. There's these, I just, I remember these, these periods and it's, it doesn't necessarily, you don't fall forever, but that initial fall, if you let yourself have it, I, I've found in my experience that it becomes something you become committed to. You, you do the fall and then, and then you fall into this love of what you're doing. And then you start to go like, I will do whatever it takes to make this work. Mm -hmm. And I think, unfortunately, sometimes we go down the road in these things with relationships and with creative endeavors and we get knocked off by the world because the world kind of goes, well, like it's not working out yet. And da, 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 da. And we start to doubt ourselves. And, and we start to have ideas of, of how we think it's supposed to go. Right. And, and part of claiming the path is, is being like, well, I is, is actually, it, it seems contradictory. It's a bit of a paradox, but usually I find that it's in paradoxes that there's these amazing truths, which is that in claiming your path, there's a lot of letting go mm. that's involved in that process. It's being like, okay, I accept that I don't know how all of these things are going to unfold, but I trust that with my decision, with my commitment, with my passion, with my joy, 
and moving forward with that, this is going to happen. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> this is just going to happen. Yeah. And on the way, I'm going to enjoy the ride. Yeah. You know, that's kind of like it's it's really claiming the path is almost like an like an open arm, you know, just like yes. It's like a big freaking yes to everything. Hmm. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. You know, I think like the thing with the the thing with claiming the path too is claiming your path is it so it's so doesn't really matter what you do. What you end up finding out is it's the way you do life. It's not even what you do. Like, like I got into my, I started to claim my path. Actually, I started to claim my path pretty young. I would say I started to claim my path when I started playing soccer. I found soccer, football for my European friends, um, but I found it and I got super passionate about it. I loved it. Played in pretty high levels, won the provincial cup, best, best in the province. You know, I was the captain of my team two years, three years later, actually. Uh, you know, it was incredible. Then I found hockey and I was kind of between hockey and soccer, was passionate about both, started to become hockey more. And then I found architecture, started doing architecture, <laughs> I was building houses, I was creating all these great things. But then, you know, then I found film. Then I found filmmaking, I went down the filmmaking, I shared this before, but I want to share it yeah. again. Went down the filmmaking road within months or a year within doing film, all of a sudden I, be, I got an agent, found me, started going down the acting road. My acting teacher said, Brandon, you should write. You're a pretty good writer. Write. Became a paid screenwriter later in life. Made distributed films. Been on television. Did all the stuff. It isn't what I did. This is the thing that I've come to the realization. Whether it's acting, filmmaking, writing, soccer, hockey, architecture, doesn't matter. It's the way that I show up and do life. This is my path. I don't ever have to do any of those things anymore. But what they did was they were true to my heart. I found them. They helped me express me. And through that, I started to find out who I was. Mm. And I mean, I feel like this podcast, and I don't know if you feel the same, but for me, I feel like as much as I'm trying to share with people, the journeys and the experiences that we've had and, you know, everything we brought in some ways, this is my crescendo of me as an artist going, I'm going to start claiming my path. And that's why we're talking about it because for both of us, I think it's important. And we've just come to that point in our journeys where we've like gone, let's just own this shit. Let's just <laughs> like do it. Cause like, forget it. Right. Like it's like, we've been kind of dancing around it a little bit. We've had moments of great, you know, commitment. We've had moments of, I don't know, yeah. you know, right. And it's like, let's just, let's just, okay. Yeah. You know what? Let's just unapologetically, like we're doing a podcast. We're going to fucking talk about the way, yeah. <laughs> the way of being yeah. an artist. It's like, we don't know the answer, but I'll tell you what, I can tell you one thing definitively. I'm finding my way. And I see that you are too. I've seen you been been doing it. It's been incredible. And I think what what I've had other people, people who are on our last podcast, reach out to us and be like, "Can I be back on your show?" Because they loved it so much. I'm like, "This is incredible, right?" And the yeah. thing is, is like, that's when you got to get unapologetic about it. That's when you got to just be like, "Okay, we're doing this. Forget it, right?" I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> We'll find but the we're, way. Yeah, we're bringing we're up the it. conversation. We're, we're coming in. We're coming into this with our passion. Yeah. We're coming into this with with what brings us joy. Yes. And gets us lit up. Right. And that's what we're coming with. That's the most crucial component and ingredient. And we're 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 coming and we're figuring it out. And the thing is, here's the great thing. This is our first three episodes. It's you and me. We're bringing the best we can. We're two minds, but we're going to bring on guests. And that's going to be another mind and another mind yeah. and another mind. And pretty soon our audience is going to start going, Hey, what about this? What about that? More minds start coming into this. This discussion gets opened up. And the thing is, is that we just decided, why don't we give a voice to artists? Why don't we help people talk about something that the world has not really given a forum for properly in our opinions? Right. Yeah. And I can say that because, you know, we've had these discussions, but like we have a lot of industry talk. How do you succeed in business? How do you achieve your goals? Blah, 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 blah. Right. How do you, how do you make money? But like, do we have, we have spiritual talks, but do we have something for artists to say like creativity, imagination, being truthful and authentic to yourself with those things is important. And I think that's what we're trying to say. That's what we're claiming. We're going, let's do that. Be you and dream big and dream big. And 
whatever it is that you do as an artist and whatever vocation that is, because we're not just for artists as painters or actors or whatever. Like these are, these are things that we found to be universal. These seem to go, you know, some things we've figured out that seem to run across the board Mm -hmm. for most artists. Um, and, and this is about, yeah, like us finding fuller expression Mm. and freedom as well to to just give what what is ours mm-hmm. what is our best selves um, and our best expression and say this is this is everything that I authentically am at this point in time mm-hmm. you know because we're constantly unraveling mm-hmm. you know we are constantly um, becoming more and more and more and more of what we are you know so this is this is an, an an unending process of infinite possibilities and and infinite creations which is the exciting part about this way you know yes. this way of the artist yeah i think the really exciting thing too is for those of you who have listened and you been and if you haven't tuned into the first couple episodes i really highly recommend you do because they're going to help help you put in perspective what we're talking about now and what we're about to talk about but we're going to talk about in these episodes things that evan and i and other artists have come to a realization that there's like these laws or these principles of artistry these things like simplicity and motivation and you know just ways and tactics in which you can stay on path and keep yourself moving forward and staying strong. Because the thing is, is I think, you know, there's this falling in love period with whatever it is that you find when you find your artistry, when you find your kind of your purpose or your passion or your, what your light, you want to call it that you find it, it can be very exciting and you can just have this Amazing. Intoxicating. Yeah, exactly. And you just want to do it and you feel great. But this is what happens. And I'm pretty sure this happens for just about every artist. I don't know if I've ever met anybody who has not had this experience. Is that eventually the world comes in and slaps you in the face and says, <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to work. Uh, you know, like, well, yeah. you know, you know, the odds, uh, you know, whatever, like, you know, maybe you should come up with a backup plan. And then you start yeah. to let fear and stuff like that come in and you've fallen in love. But now, now the thing is, is, you know, the world comes in and starts to project its small minded fears and things like that. And in some ways they're trying to be helpful. They're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to make sure you're okay, but you need to figure out now, okay, well, I love this, but how do I figure out how to navigate and walk this path? Because all of a sudden it becomes hard. It becomes challenged. You know, you're married, so you know, right? Like you have to, you have to figure out how to negotiate, how to compromise, how to figure out how to navigate with another person. I think when you have a dream, it's kind of like that. You know, you have to, you have a relationship with this, whatever this thing is, this, this light inside of you. And you're like, okay, like, look, we need to make money because we got to eat. <laughs> but at the same time, don't worry. I'm going to read that play. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to make sure I'm still giving you attention, baby. <laughs> you know, <laughs> while I make sure that I pay the bills. You know, because like, there's a certain kind of like life that gets in the way for the artist, right? Like, I feel like we got to keep a roof over our head, make sure we're fed, make sure we're warm, whatever. Yeah. But like, at the same time, we want to do our dream. If you take money off the table, if you take resources off the table. Um, you know, in some ways it's like, oh, well, I could just do whatever I want to do. But I think here's the thing. This is what I've realized it. Cause you know, I've been pursuing this, you know, for half my life is that the, the when you hang in there, when the resources are tight, when they're low, that's when you're going to really find out what your relationship is made out of. You know what mm. I mean? Cause like, it's really easy to be kind and friendly with everybody when everything's working for you. It's really easy to be like, yeah, I'm doing this thing when you can just pay for whatever you need to do. But it's like, how creative are you going to be about finding a way when you don't necessarily have the resources? I share a story and I think stories are good. I went through a period of time where for a month I was living on $2 and 69 cents a day. I know that because here's why (laughs) I didn't have enough money to buy food, but I could buy a little loaf of Turkish bread every day. It cost me $2 and 69 cents. 
That's what I ate every day. And I ate one meal. It was a little loaf of bread. I did that for a whole month just to keep myself fed. And I lost about 10 pounds. But I did it. And I just kept... It's like, okay, I'm just fucking eating bread. That's what I'm eating. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I'm just like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep going. And that's part of it. That's part of hanging in. That's the stuff that people don't want to talk about all the time. But sometimes you got to go through that stage. you got to go through that period of time so that you can work through what what it takes. You know, because, um, you know, the thing is, is that, I I don't know, like for me, I've just always been like, well, just fucking find a way, you know? Just find, and, and that's part of claiming the path. I'm just gonna find, find a, way, a way, and you know? and and also finding what you need. You know, it's in those moments that we often find the thing that we need to break the thing wide open for us, right? Um, and I think that that's like to to bring this back into sort of the, what we're talking about with claim your own path. It's it's a kind of an acceptance of these peaks and valleys of what's going on and in many ways not really having a judgment of one being better or worse than the other it's just the thing that's happening Mm -hmm. on your path that you have chosen that you have created (laughs) to bring you to the next exciting thing Mm -hmm. to bring you to the next creativity that's going to come out right? That's going to help us, help us shed another one of the blocks that's impeding a little bit more of our light Mm. from coming out. You know what I mean? You know, you always remind me of something about how we're always making a decision between fear and love. Mm. I feel like claiming your path is deciding love. Yeah. It's like deciding to, to go with love and not let fear dictate your choices, dictate to your decisions or dictate who you're going to be in life. And I think like, you know, it's a good reminder is just to be like, well, what do I love? What's important to me? You know, uh, uh, you know, say what you will about the guy, Sylvester Sloan, you know, how he made Rocky, how he got that made the, all the adversity he faced, you know, what yeah. he went through, he sold his dog to get that, you know, to stay, <laughs> to keep going. And then he yeah. bought it back for 300% more. Like he sold it for $50, bought it back for 3000, his dog. Right. And he, he cried as he sold it, but he, you know, he had to go to such extremes and he knew that if he didn't go out and make his own thing, if he didn't fight to be, uh, you know, Rocky in that movie, right. He would not be the actor of his dreams. Mm -hmm. He knew that. And so he held strong. And I think like, you know, it's so admirable, so wild that someone was willing to face that much rejection and they won Oscars and people didn't believe in the thing. And they, they wanted to buy him off the project. Mm -hmm. And I think like that is a true example of someone claiming their path of just being like, no, I don't care how much money you'll give me. I'm going to play the lead of this thing. I'm doing this thing. It's like, whatever. And the thing is, is like, had it not worked out, we might not have, we might not talk about him. But the thing is, is that the very act of claiming your path, regardless of how it goes, there's something about that. That's the thing of, that's the thing that I think we, we find our power and our willingness to embrace what we feel is important, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is we kind of live in a world too, where we only really recognize the people who succeed, but it's hard for us to mention like, Oh, Joe Blow did this because nobody knows who that is. And it's also based on like what our kind of programmed ideas of success are too. Right. Which has to be taken into consideration, I think. Yeah. And I think like, you know, with the claiming the path, the thing is, is like, I don't think that people should get into this going like, I'm going to hack the system. I'm going to figure out how to succeed. And, you know, that's not what we're here to talk about. (laughs) You might, it might help you to do so. Yeah. And you, you can figure out how to put that piece together. But this is more about you living authentically truthful to you and really feeling fulfilled and full of joy on the experience of life. It's kind of hard to, uh, to hack authenticity. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I was, one of the things you said was just about like, um, yeah, what dictates how you're living your life? Is it, is it love or fear? 
that, that's maybe one of the simplest litmus tests I'd say that you can you can do in this thing. It's like how you know you're claiming claiming your path. Well, how much are you living in your love? Mm. You know, how much are you? How much are you? Um, is love dictating your life? Mm-hmm. And how much is fear dictating your life? That gives you a bit of an idea of where you're at. You, know, you can even it's do a great a, calibration. Yeah, and how like you know you can just do just like just do a quick judgment call. Like the first thing that po- the number that pops into your head it was sixty percent, seventy percent, love or fear. Like like just what's the first thing that that creeps into your mind? My you next know? question is, what's it going to take for it to be more love? What's it going to take to push that dial one percent? What's going to push to take it ten percent further? What's going to take for you to live in a hundred percent love state? Yeah. What's it going to take? You know? And the thing is, is like, if you move the dial after this podcast or any podcast we do at 1%, even a fraction of a percent, right? Even one tenth of a percent, it's, you're going to get closer. You're going to get more. Yeah. You're going to be more in touch with your love state. And the more you do that, watch what happens, right? Yeah. And I also ask, why would you choose anything different? Just ask yourself that question. Why would you choose anything different? Mm -hmm. That's just that, like, that was a question that that came to me some time back. Mm. And I just went, holy shit. (laughs) I don't know. Um, Well, you know, and what's the validity of these, uh, you know, these fears anyway, right? Like, I mean, fear is going to come up. And I think what's going to happen is you're going to get knocked off your love path a little bit. You're going to get knocked off that. You're going to get scared. And then you just got to go, okay, well, let's face it, you know, face yeah. your fears. Don't let them run your yeah. life. Fear is fine. You're going to have fears. But to me, it's always just like, okay, but let's bring it back to the love, mm-hmm. you know, like let's just, because in the face of that, the, my fears usually dissolve mm-hmm. when I'm connected to my light, the fear just dissipates, mm-hmm. you know, like it'll come and grab me for a second, but then it's always, I just, I'm go, okay, hold on, hold on a second. Let's just reconnect here. Let's just reconnect to, all right, well, what, what am I, what do I want? What is my sense of purpose? You know, back to those questions that we asked in the first episode, you know, like what are are, are the things I have joy about and around? And it's like, okay, it's this thing. So, I mean, I can be afraid, but it's not going to change anything. (laughs) (laughs) So I might as well go full force into this. Mm-hmm. Um, we're probably getting fairly close to wrapping this up. You want to introduce um, the beer then? Yeah. So um, today, the beer fueling this conversation is from uh, one of Vancouver's finest uh, breweries that have been operating for a little while now. This is from Brass Neck. They do amazing stuff. And uh, this is... Uh, they just got this back i don't know if they've had this one maybe last year but they just brought it back into like the spring rotation sun's starting to come out the days are getting longer (laughs) um this one is called uh sunny disposition oh yeah nice uh it is a um oh what is this one now (laughs) it's a saison oh it's a really yeah it's a saison nice uh i usually don't like those yeah six percent it's a Kind of strong. It's kind of like it, it, it. I can definitely tell it's a saison with the sweetness to it now, but um, it kind of has like more of like a lager feel, which it's not too um, whiny. Yeah, <laughs> not too. You know, it's not too uh, sour or anything. Mm-hmm. It's kind of nice. It's just an easy drinker. Yeah, that's right. I went in. And I was talking to the guy. Asked me what I wanted. And I was just and I couldn't decide. I'm looking at the list, and I was just like, I want something because the sun was shining, and I was like. I want something that's kind of like nice and easy, but still has a little bit of flavor just to like, Hmm. you know, something for my taste buds to grab onto. And then he's like, well, you try this one. (laughs) And I said, fantastic. So if you've got local beer brewers around you and you are a beer drinker and you have not yet stepped into a craft brewery, please do. Yeah, try it out. we're, We're advocates. They're artists over there in those those craft breweries, you know, doing their thing, you know, coming up with all kinds of wonderful concoctions. 
yeah. and uh, and beverages, and uh, and they're a fantastic part of the community as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, totally. And that wasn't an advertisement or anything. No, no, we're not paid by <laughs> by these guys. We just we just drink the beer. We like it. We, uh, you know, Evan and I were writing scripts, and we would have a beer, and we'd talk about our artists' lives, and that's how these conversations were born. So we kept the beer as a tradition. Yep, yeah, and we're still having the conversations, whatever you think about them. <laughs> uh, all, all right. Okay, right. let, so let's wrap this baby up. And because, I mean, really what we're doing is, I, I don't think we need to necessarily come to a conclusion here, but I think what we need to do, in my opinion, is we closing need to... Statements. <laughs> yeah, closing statements. Yeah, closing, what's your closing statements? Is we're setting you up to take on the rest of this podcast, to take on yeah. the rest of these things. Um, I think we've given you enough to start um, claiming your own path in your own way, and you will dig in more and find more about how to do this. Um, but, you know, if you've listened to these first three episodes... They give you kind of what you need, prepare you for what you're about to get into and give you enough groundwork, I think, to take in the next complexities of what we're kind of going to suggest because we're going to get more specific about your path, right? We're going to get more specific about the steps you take, the the way you navigate the terrain of your path and such, mm-hmm. right? But right now, we're kind of these first three are just about you getting clear, getting centered and kind of being willing to move forward and have a vision and a dream and kind of go and do it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I want to say so, one other thing, uh, too. Please. I want to suggest this to people. Your thoughts are very important. Mm. What you think about is what you'll bring about. So think about it this way. Your mind is a garden. And thoughts are like seeds and you plant thoughts in the garden of your mind and you nurture them and water them and they blossom. If you neglect them, they fade away, they disappear. If you have a thought you don't like, chop it off of the roots and anytime it ever comes up, plant something else. Think of something else. Do something else. Your thoughts are what's going to create your, your world. It's going to create your universe. You're going to bring that back out into the world. So just to give people a quick little thing, and I think this is important moving forward. Thoughts come in like a stream. They just come into your mind and you get to choose which ones to think about, which ones to entertain, which ones to reject and get rid of and bypass. Be mindful about your thoughts. Choose things that align with the world you're creating for yourself, the vision of yourself you want to be, and begin to entertain and nurture and grow those things. Those seeds will grow, and whatever, anything, these doubts, these fears, they are plants as well in your mind. Just stop giving them attention. Stop watering them. Stop putting all your worries into them, right? Feed yourself in a way that is empowering, in a way that brings the best you to the world. And you're going to create it. And we'll get into that probably more. But oh, we're is, definitely going to be getting into all this that. This is what more. I want to kind of, this is what I want to send people off on. Mm-hmm. You know, this is, this is the thing. And, and I, reason why I share this, Evan, is because for me, when I realized that I am the creator of my own world, that I am the author and the actor of this existence, that in my mind, I visualize it and then I live it out and I act it out and I be it and I do it, that I actually am the one in many ways who gives myself my own experience. And I know that might sound a little bit uh, complex, a little bit heady, but this is the thing. As you take this journey with us, understand that your way is something you're creating. You are the creator. You're creating the journey and you're living the journey and you're making it up in your mind before you do it. And we're going to get more into that, but like start to start to be mindful and conscious of what you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I know that not everyone's going to understand fully what I'm saying here. Don't worry. Just begin to start allowing yourself to see yourself the way you want to be and to see your future the way you want it to become. And anytime you're going down a road of like worry or fear, like, oh, what if this happens? Just go, I'm not doing that anymore. And go down the road of like, what could happen? What could be, you know, Mm -hmm. who could I be, you know, um, start seeing the great things about you. Right. And that's really what I want to send people off with. Yes. And, and I'll echo a little bit. It's like, yeah, there's, 
there's no need to entertain the unconstructive thoughts that go on. You know, the, the fear thoughts that go on. Don't need to entertain them. Change the thoughts. So I completely agree, and I know we'll be divulging into that. And, and uh, what I just want to leave everybody with, because I said I, I, I was going to say kind of like my little piece Do it. at some point, and you actually kind of uh, provided a beautiful little segue into it, which is um, my last piece of to kind of surmise this whole thing of claim your path is that you're it. You're it. You're the whole damn thing. You are the person on the path. You are the person who is creating the path. You're the person who's created the path for yourself. Um, you're it. You, there's, there's no, there's no thing to, to wait for. There's not, there's no having to be enough waiting for you to be enough, you know, waiting for, for some, no, you're it. You're it. You're everything you need to be. You already have the light that you need to, to, to start, to, to begin this journey. You've already got it. You're it. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Yeah. You know, okay, one last thing. (laughs) One last thing. I wanted to give you the last word, but I really have to say this. Is that... (laughs) This is great. Um, (laughs) I'll be the judge of that. (laughs) No one would want to cheat you on your journey. And there's just so much pressure in this world to be somewhere, to be somebody, to get somewhere, to achieve something. If you just dropped into that place, you would miss out the whole ride there. And that's why this is so incredible. We would never want to take that ride away from you. And the thing is, is that the view in your vision that you have, you know, Evan and I were talking about this and, you know, my focus tends to be sometimes in the vision. I'm looking at, you know, look at this view we could have. Evan's much where more. Where we could go. And it's yeah. like, Evan's much look more, at where we are. Look at where we are. Look at, <laughs> and, and, and we are a great team that way because you, you continue to ground me on the journey that it's like, it's amazing where we are. And I think what I do is I kind of help you see like, look where we're going to go. And that's the thing you, in all of us, we can have both of those. And, um, you know, our team, our teamship, our partnership has been really great in our journey so far because, you know, you've helped me to remember that wherever I am is totally fucking awesome. And I think what I bring to you is go, look where you can go, man. Look where we can go. Look what we can do. And I think that as you claim your path, do that, do that for yourself, you know, um, be awesome where you are. Love it. It is what it is. You're in the perfect fucking spot. And where you're going is incredible too. But you don't need to be there to enjoy this. But you'll get there. <laughs> At the same time, just like take this walk with us, right? Mm-hmm. Because I know you want to get there. You want to be holding that Oscar. You want to be like, when I get to the Oscar or whatever it is, I'm going to be great. But like, you're great right now. Yeah. And you'll be great when you hold the Oscar. But you know what? When you get the Oscar, you're great right now. You'll want to get the next Oscar. Yeah. And it's all good. <laughs> it's this beautiful, yeah. it's this beautiful. Ma- I said that at the beginning. There's going to be many destinations. Yeah. <laughs> and just like one thing, because yeah, like the Oscar, it's just like it'll only be truly great when you get the Oscar if it's truly great right now where you're at. So. Yeah, man, we're going to be talking this stuff. (laughs) We're going to be talking lots of other stuff, but we're always trying to keep it provocative Mm -hmm. and, and, and man, interesting for us. So keep tuning in, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. Yes. Way of the artist. Thanks for listening to the show. If you got something out of this, if you feel it improved your life or your journey in any way, please take a moment to subscribe, leave a review, or share the episode. You can also support us on Patreon, where we have tons of great bonuses. You are the ones that make the show possible and help us to thrive. Thank you for joining us.